What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets, Action Network's daily NBA betting podcast. We're in the workshop. Game four, NBA Finals. Denver Nuggets are up now 2-1. Line sits for game four. Denver Nuggets minus three and a half. Total sits at 210 and a half. With me to break down game four is Brandon Anderson, Action Network's futures analyst for the NBA, NFL. He knows the future. He's got the crystal ball. Then, of course, one of the sharpest NBA minds around. J Money is money is with us. I am your host, Sean Little. You know the deal. We're going to give our best bets for the NBA Finals. Game four, we'll give the cap. We'll get you guys out of here. Make sure you download the Action Network app. That's where all the plays are logs, best articles, best breakdowns in the business. J Money is money. Let's start with you. Give me your best bet for game four of the NBA Finals. Best bet is going to be Heat in the first half plus the one. I do also think they win the game full game. I'm thinking about add, go ahead and adding that plus three and a half for the full game. I think this is a Heat type of spot, uh, despite what everybody thinks. Brandon Anderson. I like the Nuggets. I try to figure out the way I wanted to play it. I'm going to steal your pick, Sean. You went here last game. I'm going to tail here. I'm going to go with the Nuggets team total over 106 and a half, guys. As that total keeps dropping, they just had to put the number here, so I think it's too low. I'll take the over. And a couple of props for you. Kevin Love over one and a half threes at plus 145. And give me Jamal Murray assists over seven and a half. Keep riding that one. That's minus 120. I'm going right back to the well. I'm with you, Brandon Anderson. Nuggets, team total over 106 and a half. Also, I'm going to take Aaron Gordon to have a block, minus 105. And those are going to be the two plays I'll make official. We'll talk about potentially a stocks play as we get into the cap. Let's go right back to J Money is Money. Talk to me. Going back a couple of days ago, Matt Moore laid out the question. He said, whoever wins game three, <laughs> are we going to take the opposite in game four? Right on cue, J Money is Money is going to the heat. Talk to me about the first half. And then you got to decide if you're making this Miami Heat full game an official play or are we just going to stick with the first half? Yeah, I mean, I said it the other day. It's really one of those that I kind of just have to go with my good. Um, I do think that series goes back to Denver uh, tied 2-2. Um, I just feel like this. I feel like that's the way it's supposed to go. You see, uh, I'll put it that way. But then you have the Nuggets who they get a little fat and happy, man. They play their best game, and then they come out things they, uh, think things are easy. You see what I'm saying? So they off in Miami, not necessarily the best of spots as well. This is the season for the Miami Heat. If they don't come out with some intensity um, and come out with a, with a sense of urgency in this game, the series is definitely going to be over in five. And I'll be honest, I do think they have a little bit more fight in it. I don't think they win this series, but they can definitely take this series to uh, push it to six or seven games, in my opinion. This is a very pivotal game for them. Absolute must win. They have to come out with something in the first half, but I'll be honest with you guys. I think the Heat do win this game um, outright, and we go back to Denver tied 2-2. Simply put, because the Nuggets, they are just a, they're, they just don't like to play. They like to get smacked in the mouth first before they really play. You saw it, game two. Now, game three, they come out there and play their actual game. Game four, some tells me that they come out a little slow, maybe a little still hungover. You never know, man. I know it's the NBA <laughs> Finals, but these guys still want to live their life as well here, man. So I've, 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 I know how it is, guys. So I'll go official with Heat plus the one in the first half, and as you can see, that that's probably their best chance as well as the, the minus one or the plus one compared to the plus three and a half for the full game. But uh, be perfectly honest with you, I'll probably I'll end up putting someone Heat plus a three and a half as a win win. I need the Nuggets to win the series so much that I kind of could just take take the uh, Heat plus a uh, plus the points in game four as somewhat of an insurance bid. Jay, let me ask you this. Because I was not expecting Jamal Murray to be facilitating the rock like he is. That two-man game has been absolutely sensational from Jokic and Murray. It was on full display in game three. Now, and we're previewing game four. I know, I think I led in the intro in game three, but we are previewing game four. They're up 2-1, the Denver Nuggets. Talk to me about how they slow up that two man. What do you think they can do, if anything, to combat that? Because with KCP not playing very well, Michael Porter Jr. is not playing very well at all on both sides of the rock. Looks completely lost on D, not affecting the game on offense at all. MPJ has been a zero. How do they slow up Murray potentially dishing? Say, say, say that Jokic is just, we know he's going to show up. How do they slow up one of the two of those guys, at least in the first 24 minutes, to, to cover that number? 
It's simple. You play Jamal Murray full court. You play him super tight. You play him super physical full court. That's what takes Jamal Murray out of this game. You can do the extended zone, whatever you like to. If I'm the coach, if I'm Spolcher, I'm putting uh, Highsmith on him. I'm putting Caleb Martin, whoever. Whoever's your best defender on the floor at that time, you put him on Jamal Murray the whole game. I'm talking about start to finish. Make it hard for him to catch the ball, and you make him work the whole way up the uh, floor. We saw Landry Chimet do it, and Jamal Murray doesn't necessarily like it. You see what I'm saying? He doesn't necessarily like it, but I'll tell you, I don't think we see the Nuggets' best game in this game, and I also think the Heat, they shoot a little bit better. It was part of my cap for taking the Nuggets in game three, was that Heat, first game back at the house after seven game, seven or eight uh, uh, days off from the house, it's a little bit of adjustment period. You see, they didn't shoot the ball well. I definitely expect them to shoot the ball well, the uh, the threes to fall in this one. Uh, this is the Heat spot right here, the second game, uh, home game two. This is the spot where it's supposed to show up and knock down more threes. B.A., talk to me about... Uh... What Jay I, I got a question thinking. for Jay before before yeah. we move to the team total here. So Jay, I struggle a little bit on this one. You heard me. I like the Nuggets here, but I was eyeing this spot potentially before the series. This is the one game in the finals on short rest or or on one day of rest. Not not short rest compared to regular season, but everything else two days off. This is the one that probably helps uh, limit the South Beach partying angle a little bit. We just got the one day off here in between, but. I was a little dismayed as someone that was eyeing the spot really for Denver the whole series because Miami has not had any time off, right? Miami went game seven straight in, but then game three threw me off that a little bit. Jimmy Butler, to me, looked by far his best in the series, much more aggressive attacking, looked like Jimmy Butler, right? We, we, we know when he looks like himself, this was the real Jimmy. I also noticed that, of course, uh, Murray and Jokic, I think both played the entire second half, right? Or close to it. Yeah. They played, I believe, 45 minutes for Murray, 44 for Jokic. We still got 40 and 41 for Butler and Bam. So it's not like they took the night off. But I was ready to kind of like this spot a lot for Denver that, okay, finally, this is where you get the tired Miami team and Denver to maybe pull away late. But Denver looks like they might be the more tired team where they shorten the rotations a lot. They really went for the kill in game three. And I think they got it, right? They got the win. They put themselves in great spot. But between that and as good as Miami's been in the fourth quarter consistently in the series, sort of threw me back a little bit. So I, I toyed with just wanting to play a Miami second half angle because of what you said, Jay. This is it. You got to empty the tank. There ain't no garbage time minutes in game four. Miami has to push the pedal all the way. I looked at Denver to win by single digit points or one to 10 points it is plus 175 at FanDuel, our sponsor. I looked at that one of like, well, I like Denver, but not to pull away too far. Do, yeah, I, I just, I'm struggling through it a little bit. So Jay, as the Miami pick of the three of us, what do you make of just any of that, uh, uh, the, the attrition that Miami has had, the short rest spot, second half? What do you think about that side? Because you're on the early spot for them, but how about later in the game? Yeah, I still, like I say, whether I go, if, I'll go ahead and go official with on the show. Miami Heat plus three and a half. I know that right. Matt's going to get mad and he wants the money line. I always, it's something I do. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. I always <laughs> take the points. I don't give a damn about that stat, about them winning and <laughs> or winning or cover all that. I don't care. I take the points. You know what I'm saying? Because then if it falls between one or two, I still get the cash. And it's happened to me plenty of times. So I do think the Heat win this game. I will go official with the, with the plus three and a half. And the Heat are in a lot better shape than the Nuggets, simply put, because the Heat have this thing for you to be on a team. It's like you have to have. Have a certain percentage of body fat in your body, like literally everybody. You see what I'm saying? So that's part of the heat culture. So I do think they'll be primed and ready. And may, maybe got a little little tidbit that uh some players went out and party with Monte Morris. I'm sure you guys saw Monte Morris at the game. <laughs> they said that he went out and celebrated the win with a few Nuggets players. So not the whole team, but hey, a few players is is good enough for me. But um, aside of that, I think this is the heat season right here. I think we see it. Like I say, home game two. I think we see them having a lot more legs for the jump shots as well the first the game three was just a horrible spot oh uh, as i said it two and five against the spread coming off seven or more days off of uh, coming back home off of seven or more days so this is their spot to give it everything they have i do think they will uh i do think exactly what you're saying Jokic and murray playing all those minutes that probably comes back to bite them here um with only one day of risk va talk to me about the team total then we'll get into some props yeah so i i was trying to think through my various nuggets angles last night so 
Sean, I know I, I gave credit to you. I gotta give credit here to at Rackman Jones on Twitter. He asked me up in the comments last night of what'd you think about the team total play? And that was when I first saw the team total number. This is not an angle that I normally look at here. I was looking at just the Nuggets three and a half, the Nuggets one to 10. And man, when I just saw the 106 and a half, just that number alone, I was like, are you serious? We, 107, that's all we need for Denver? 107, it just, it strikes me as so low. So I, I looked into the numbers a little bit here. Well, but before the numbers, just we saw Denver get get loose in game three, I thought. We talked about the Jamal Murray thing. I agree. Miami's going to do something different with them. They tried to blitz. They tried to trap. I, I don't feel like that was working very well. You're going to give me the Nikola Jokic short roll four on three? Okay, cool. Yeah, please. Please invite that strategy again. So I don't know about that. I don't know that there are a lot of answers. That when he gets cooking like that and hits those shots early, you just got to weigh it out. Hope you can survive. And they didn't survive in game three. But it, it felt to me like Denver looked itself finally. They looked themselves in the first half of the first game of the series and then not really since then. Like there was a lot of talk about, oh, well, Denver's offensive rating is higher in game two than it was in game one. Yeah, well, that's because Jokic just made a billion shots and then they had that non-Jokic run in the second quarter. It The eye test said stuff doesn't look right for Denver. The eye test in game three says Denver looked themselves again. I felt like they were getting what they wanted to. Miami only had four turnovers in that game, 10 less than Denver and got blown out. I don't know how that goes, but Denver is probably going to get more than four turnovers. So that's some easy points they should get that they did not get in game three. The pace, of course, is a big factor here. That's why the number is so low. But the pace is already low. We like we can't get any slower, right? We're already as slow as it can get. And weirdly, the game four short rest thing, you would think on the surface, oh, well, guys are tired, so a slower pace. But it kind of goes the other way. Guys are tired, so mental mistakes, turnovers, easy bucket down to the other end. Guys are tired. Oh, didn't lock in on transition defense. Jokic got out ahead. Easy bucket on the other end. So, and, and you know, maybe the other way too, but I'm just on the Denver side. So I'm doing the Denver argument here. So back to the number, 106 and a half. So I looked into this. Obviously, we've played 12 quarters so far. Denver's had at least 25 points in three of the four quarters each game. And then in the other quarter, they averaged 22.3. So we're at 97 points is the floor right there. We're at one quarter each game. Denver's had at least 29. So that's four more. So we're at 101. Denver's floor is 101 points in the series, even with the pace as slow as it is. We only need 107. I only need six more points out of that. And Denver in 18 playoff games has gone over this 16 times, 89% hit rate, including they went over in all four losses. The two unders actually came in and grinded out wins, one of them in the series, of course. So that's possible. That is a possible way that we lose this bet here. But I just feel like Denver showed they're going to score when Jokic played in the regular season, they hit this over 87% of the time, 107 points or more. If Jokic is out there, and especially as many minutes as he's playing right now, I just trust Denver's going to score 107. I think they do it in a win, but I think they can do it in a loss too. So that's ultimately why I ended up on this spot here is I'm not really, I'm not going to play the Denver three and a half. I'm going to sit this one out. I got my Denver series stuff. Jay might be right on that Miami comes through here. I'll give the Heat some credit. I'm just going to take the, the Nuggets to score, and I don't know if the Heat score their points or not. I'm done. I'm done projecting whether the threes fall. I just expect Denver to score. Bingo. That's exactly why I'm on the Nuggets team total as well. I, I can't I can't guess anymore. I just know that the Denver Nuggets <laughs> are going to show up, and they're, they're the better offensive team, better well-rounded, and they have the best offensive player in the NBA running the show, and he looks as if he's unstoppable. Also, I think the offensive and defensive rebounding domination continues for the Denver Nuggets. That's a key for them. They they absolutely smoked the heat on the glass in game three. I think that's a big key in the game. That will continue. Also, with the desperation spot and the, the, the only one-day rest, the Miami Heat are going to have more than four turnovers, and the pace of the game is going to have to pick up because they have to try to compete and win the game. The, the the any any type of safe play that the Miami Heat could have done in game three that they they did in some possessions in some parts of the game is completely out. I think they're going to have to come out, try to do whatever needs to be done to, to get a W. And I think that just leans into picked up pace, offense, and I expect 
and no, the Denver Nuggets can score. I, my, my initial thought was lean to the game over full game, but then that 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 means I have to bet on the Miami Heat to score points too. I don't. <laughs> I'm not interested in doing that. I'm going to lean into the Denver Nuggets continuing to to get busy. Now, I'm not expecting Jamal Murray to have another triple double. That's for sure. I'm expecting some of those guys to regress, but I, I'm honestly not expecting Jokic to regress at all across the board. I expect to, I expect, and I'm also not expecting Christian Brown to score 15 points either, but I do expect KCP to knock down some shots. I do expect Bruce Brown to come in and get some buckets. I do expect Michael Porter Jr., who is the playoff, is is the conference finals and finals Julius Randle at the moment. Just if the shot is not falling, he's not interested in anything and he's not focused at all. The, The amount of mental mistakes that are happening on the defensive end, I understand you're not, your shot's not falling. That's fine, but it's affecting him. He's still thinking about the possession where he missed a jump shot on the other end and he's losing people getting backdoored. It's crazy. So, but I, yeah. I, I if he hits a couple of jumpers, case he hits a couple of jumpers, Jokic does what he does. I expect the, the nuggets to continue to kill on the glass, more turnovers. The Miami Heat had four turnovers and lost by 15 points. I don't know if I've seen, I can't remember the last time I've seen a disparity in that sense. I expect the Nuggets to continue to, to clean up the glass. I expect the pace to be faster. I expect the Miami Heat to turn the ball over more. And if I think the, the Denver Nuggets were on their way to cruising, because I had one, the team total last game in game three was 108 and a half. They were cruising to that number. And for some reason, in these fourth quarters, they're trying to run the clock out, almost like prevent defense, like, like you're playing Madden and you're just trying to run the run the clock out, and that's something that they're going to have to address. Matt, uh, um, Malone laid out that hey, they're going to try to go out and win this game, just like they showed up in Game Three. They're going to come out and do like that in Game Four. The biggest thing for me is Jay. You talk about how Denver gets fat and happy. I think they took that punch and woke up in Game Two. They were like, "Whoa, this is the Miami Heat that everybody's been talking about. This is the Miami Heat that people warned us about. That hey." These dudes don't make a lot of mistakes, possession to possession. They will grind you out. They will punch you in the face. I think they saw that in game two. Malone was like, hey, I tried to warn you guys. This is the Miami Heat. This is what they do. They came in ready in game three. I expect them to carry that throughout the rest of the series, five or six games here for the Nuggets. I'll take the the tried and true Denver Nuggets to come up and score 107 plus points uh, in a game on the road. Sean and VA, I'd like to go on record and say, and this is why I'm not taking the heat on the money line. I'd like for them to lose the game by one or two or three points. That's actually what I'd love. That would be a dream scenario. I'd need to, I'm in Denver. The city would go crazy. I'm one of the Nuggets to win the series various ways as well. So um, I like, I want them to win this game. It's just like, I'll go ahead and take the three and a half. Wouldn't be surprised if the Heat did win it outright, but I just want to go on record that I, I would love for the <laughs> Nuggets to win this game by one or two points. Like, I would absolutely love it. Jay, you're going to be at the uh, the official Action Network watch party for this game, yeah? I will be there. Tell tell the people the details on that if anyone's around and wants to join there. Yeah, so I believe it's at some uh, – I don't have the exact place, but I did tweet. I'll retweet it on Twitter as well, but it uh, starts at 5 o'clock. You guys – I know Chris Raybun. I was doing uh, Green Dot Daily with him yesterday. He's going to be there as well. So the stars will be out. Well, Chris Raybun, he's the star, not me. <laughs> no, um, no, nah, nah, uh, the yeah, stars. It's plural. The nah, stars are out. Nah, we'll, We'll we'll be there. Um, obviously, Katie uh, Reach Creek will be there and stuff. So we're gonna have a good time, man. So just uh, make sure you click the link, check out Action Network um, uh, Twitter page or my page as well. Click that link. Make sure your RSVP and uh, the way that they know that you're coming or whatever. But I believe it's free to come. You just have to RSVP. But I will definitely be there uh, for sure. Cool. Let me get into this. Um, some props here. Ba, kick us off, and we'll get into the props. You're looking at you're looking at love over one and a half threes and Murray on assists. Yeah, I gotta be honest. You talked about Michael Porter Jr. I started out wanting the MPJ under eleven and a half points and assists just because dude has done nothing the last two games. He has seven points, no assists combined in the two games, but that's such a low number, right? Like I I, I was wrongfully on the double double in game two for him. Uh, you know it's. In props, it's hard because you see a thing and you're like, okay, play that angle again. But that angle is gone. We adjusted. Now we're on to the next thing. I feel like Michael Porter Jr. is going to hit some shots at some point. So I don't know when it's going to happen, but you know, you might get two threes in a minute and suddenly you're at six toward the 11 and a half. No, thank you. I, that's the old catch the falling knife. But in this case, maybe the knife is rising. I don't know. So I'm going to stay away from that. I'm going to keep riding the Jamal Murray hot hand at the assist thing. 
I didn't see this coming. This was an angle that Jim Turby was on in our props before the series. He picked Murray to lead the series in threes, 42 to one. Murray has led all the way. Murray has been the potential assist leader all three games between both teams. So he's at 17 from game one, 21 in game two, 16 in game three. He's been very consistent. Actually, he's been unlucky. Some of his potential assists are going to MPJ and KCP, and they're missing (laughs) all the shots. Jokic's assists have been absurd high conversion rate because, I mean, he's hitting dude for layups, which that's Jokic. That's part of the greatness that he has. So he's going to keep being high. But I like Murray to keep getting the assists. He's converting about 59%. That's right around his average for the season. So if you look at the math, he's he's getting those 16 or more potentials. That puts him in line to get something like nine and a half. Well, yeah, that's what we're seeing. He's had double-digit assists all three games so far. So I like the over seven and a half. It's at minus 120. You can play this more aggressively a couple of ways if you look at it. You can still bet Murray to lead the series in assists. I still like it. I see a plus 300 out there. We've given that out multiple times now. And a fun one, I think this is a terrible number personally. At FanDuel right now, you can bet Will Jamal Murray average double-digit assists every game of the finals. Well, I personally think that's two games. I think that is a two-game parlay. I think Denver wins here, wins game five in a row. We already hit the first three legs of our five-leg parlay, and he's averaging, you know, like 18 potential assists. I think he's going to be right there. Like we're going to probably have a 10 and one and an eight or nine and need a little bit of help on the last one. It's plus 1900. You guys to do this for a spot that he has been hitting every game so far. So you're right. I see some Jamal regression coming. I know they're trying to get the ball out of his hands. They've seen what we've seen. Jokic is going to do the Jokic stuff. They can't stop that, but they can put the clamps on Murray a little bit. They have a chance, but I think part of putting the clamps on him, it means he's going to dump the ball off to Jokic, who flips it up and in, boof, off the, off the rim, whatever, and there's another bucket, free assist for Jamal Murray. Life should be so good, right? <laughs> so I, I like Jamal Murray. I got Kevin Love, too, but I want to hear uh, your Aaron Gordon one, and I'll do Love after that. Yeah, no doubt. Jamal Murray, by the way, we talk, I talked about the Miami Heat getting confidence early to start the game. And they were on their way in the first quarter, like the first two or three minutes. And Jamal Murray was the first person to come in and hit a couple of jump shots. Like, hey, relax. We're all right. We're here. And he played sensational and, and locked him in the rest of the way. I'm going to go Aaron Gordon to have a block. Minus 105, FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, this is an interesting number because it's juiced to the under, actually. Minus 125 for no block at FanDuel Sportsbook. He's had a block. If you go back in the last six games, he's had a, at least one block in five of six had a block in the first two games of the series. And to me, it's clear. He is the number one option on Jimmy Butler. He should see as much Jimmy Butler as possible. I think we're in a spot now where that's clear to everyone. And as long as he stays out of foul uh, trouble, he'll be in the mix with a lot of Jimmy Butler late in the shot clock, a lot of different situations where he'll be able to protect the rim and pick up a block. And with Bam down there as well, it's a lot of opportunities for Aaron Gordon to, to affect a shot, get a piece of one, and get one block. Now, the stocks, plus one, or over one and a half stocks, that's blocks plus steals, is plus 150. He has not had a steal in the last two rounds so far, Aaron Gordon. But throw that desperation piece I'm talking about with the Miami Heat, with the one day of rest, with the pace picking up in this game, He's going to be in a lot of passing lanes. I like Eric Gordon to affect this game on the defensive end, like he's been affecting it throughout the entire playoffs. So at plus 150, I'm going to take a nibble there, but I'm going to bet the full full play on Aaron Gordon to have one block in this game. He's going to see a lot of Jimmy Butler. He's going to be by the rim a ton. I like what Aaron Gordon's been doing. I'll play that along with the team total. And if you want to nibble on the stocks at the plus 150 number, be my guess. He averaged almost a steal on the in the regular season at 0.8 throughout. He he him picking up a steal wouldn't shock me at all, and I expect him to pick up a block. Yeah, these defense props are so tricky because I mean yeah. you're you're looking you're we're waiting a whole game, 48 minutes for one play. Yeah, and it's not just one play. It's like one play. Oh, did the ref call a foul? Did we decide that was a block? Oh, that was a steal. It was on the way up. It's not a block. Yeah. 
I, I like the stocks more than the individual steals or blocks for that reason. If you make a defensive play, I never know really how the the you know the guy giving credit. I'm not sure if he's going to give it as a block or a steal. So you know the stocks kind of covers me either way. Well, but yeah, I heard right. if you the, complain. All, all the analysis about him being on Butler and keeping that as much as they can dead on, and Butler too. You know, as as good as he looked in Game Three, he still has not looked himself mostly for the series. He's been getting blocked a little bit in the paint, so I, I like that angle for him too. And if you complain loud enough on Twitter, the NBA may maybe flips it for you. If you if you, <laughs> if you add need, enough, if you add enough that people, Memphis on, Grizzly, you need <laughs> that Memphis Grizzly score creeper uh, to get that. Yeah, there we sure. go. <laughs> if you add enough people on Twitter and add them and start and start uh, subreddits, you might That's be able right. to get something close flipped, and then we can cash a ticket there as well. All right, anything else before we get out of here? Jay Money is Money Likes the Heat. We're staying away from the full game. Brandon Anderson and I, we're going with the Nuggets. Anything else, fellas, before we tip off? I got to do Kevin Love real quick. Oh, yeah. Over one and a half threes plus 145. I think the one and a half is the right line you got to set there. I think that there should be something like minus 145. Here's the numbers for Kevin Love. You got to throw out the Celtics series, right? We all watched it. We basically took him out of the series for Caleb Martin. It wasn't the right spot for Kevin Love. Every series is different in the playoffs. Clearly, this is a spot for him. Him being the starting lineup has has juiced the offense, opened up that first quarter for them. If you throw out the Celtics series, he's averaging 5.4 attempts from behind the arc per game, 1.8 makes. This series, he's 2 of 5 and 2 of 6. He's not playing a lot of minutes. doesn't matter. That's the He's out there to stretch the offense and shoot the ball when he gets it. He is going to shoot it. Without any conscience in the world, he's going to keep on shooting. So I'm not going to go crazy with any escalators here or anything else. But if you t- take the Celtics series out, he's over this in 9 out of 13 matchups. Despite that, he's playing like 12, 16, 20 minutes a game. He's getting the shots up. They need the threes. The threes were down from Miami last game. He's one of the few that still actually got a few up. So I like Kevin Love. I, I like the over one and a half. We just need to... I think that this is overpriced here at plus 145. To recap, Brandon Anderson, Nuggets team total over 106 and a half over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Kevin Love over one and a half threes, plus 145. Jamal Murray over seven and a half assists. J Money is money. Miami Heat first half plus one and full game plus three and a half. I am also on the team total over 106 and a half. And Aaron Gordon to have a block minus 105. I'm also going to nibble on the stocks Aaron Gordon plus uh blocks plus steals over one and a half at plus 150 is where you can get it for Brandon Anderson for J money is money I am Sean Little game four NBA finals pick your winner we'll see you next time and don't forget get buckets baby <laughs>